Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna begin this video with a pretty standard question of, uh, when's this gonna end? <laughs> when's this gonna stop? No, I'm not talking about your dad's trip to the milk market. I'm of course speaking about every single week there seems to be this trend now of somebody in Hollywood who created something which a lot of people seem to absolutely adore, gets exposed or gets charged with something absolutely into a horrific. Morty. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, yes, it's happened again. Allow me to introduce you to Justin Roiland. Now, some of you may know who this man is, some of you may not. Uh, allow me to judge your mind. Pretty much, Justin Roiland is the co-creator of family household beloved character, Pickle Rick. Uh, yeah, now, I'm not going to speak about the law and crimes this little thing right here has committed. In fact, the creation alone of Pickle Rick was indeed a crime. But alas, yes, Justin Roiland was recently charged with two felonies. Justin Roiland, co-creator and star of animated comedy Rick and Morty, is facing felony domestic violence charge related to an incident in January 2020. It just feels like this is happening every week. Can, can, can somebody in Hollywood just be a nice person for what is... Is that too much to ask for? Please, can you just stop? Roiland has been charged with one count of domestic battery with corporal injury and one count of false imprisonment by menace, violence, fraud, and slash or deceit. And if convicted of these charges, Justin Roiland could actually be facing up to several years in prison. And in 2020, he did actually pay a $50,000 Bond. And my friends, I do have to quickly clarify here that yes, the man hasn't been found guilty yet, but also, even if he's not found guilty, based on some of the things that we're going to go into, basically, it's not looking good. Because my friends, this situation is absolutely everywhere. So many people are speaking about this at the moment, and it's actually created like a bit of a snowball, because with this one situation right here, it's actually led to even more allegations coming out to do with Justin Roiland. And of course, one of these uh, particular allegations does delve into the territory of a, well, a lot of people in Hollywood just can't stop themselves from doing this particular task, which they all just seem to fail at. And of course, that task is not messaging children. They really seem to struggle at that one. Because yes, there is now an absolute plethora of people coming out and speaking against Justin Roiland, saying that when they were around the ages of 16, 35-year-old Justin Roiland was sending them extremely inappropriate messages. And ladies and gentlemen, whilst the charge and these allegations alone are absolutely horrific, I do have to, you know, uh, break the sad news that it doesn't end here. No, no, no. Today we're going to be going down a pit of hell. This descent in this video that we're going to be taking is honestly one of the more uh, terrifying things, some of the things that I found doing research for this video is honestly uh, uh, just kind of shocking. I'm, I'm kind of confused to how this man has, has managed to not even receive a slight ounce of criticism from the major public. It's kind of been things that have been sweeped under the rug and now are only really resurfacing. I'm, I'm genuinely confused to this, but alas, it's going to be a pretty messed up one because this situation is far worse than we originally thought. And yes, it is uh, quite ironic that the creator of Pickle Rick has seemingly got himself into a right old pickle. But yes, my friends, the first thing that we need to do right now is, yes, take a look at the main allegation that I did just mention that everybody has been speaking about at the moment. But before I do that, I do want to be a little bit shameless here and say that YouTube recently have been absolutely horrific. They have been age restricting me, demonetizing me, and that's not really like a massive problem. But when it keeps on happening, it's getting a little bit worrying. So I can only ask if you could, one, subscribe because that will help me out, but also just to like and interact with this video, comment down below, because this is very important information that we're speaking about today, and I would love this video to actually get out there to a lot of people, but YouTube with all of their new rules and everything, it's becoming increasingly more difficult. So please, uh, for the love of God, just interact with this video, and, and if you want to be even better than that, just subscribe. Thank you very much. Let's get into this main allegation. The charges against Justin for domestic violence. Pretty much this, as I said, is the most spoken about case when it comes to Justin, and obviously it has led to a response from Justin himself, as his representatives pretty much came out very confidently when it came to these allegations, and they actually said that there is no overstating how inaccurate the recent media coverage of the situation in the last few weeks has been, and to be clear, not only is Justin innocent, but they also have every expectation that this matter is on course to have been dismissed once the district attorney's office has completed their review of the evidence, and they look forward to clearing Justin's name. And of course, my friends, this is probably what any attorney is going to say in literally any situation, because I mean, if, if they don't say that, then, you know, th th their client's probably going to get a lot 
locked up. But the thing is, is something's a little bit suspicious because when you scroll further down the knee in the article, it does actually say that a reported protective order was filed against Royland in 2020, which prohibited Royland from being with 100 feet of the person that filed that protective order. And my friends, I've never claimed to be a legal law expert. I don't have any qualifications in that field, but I do just think from like a regular human perspective, it would be a little bit suspicious to randomly file a protective order against somebody of that magnitude for no specific reason. I feel like there has to be some reasoning there, but based on the attorney's words in that article, you wouldn't think anything has happened. You'd think this man is completely guilt-free, but then you do just have to ask the question of, well, well, why was a protective order filed against this guy? It, to me, it is just very suspicious, and this is the first act of, well, I said to be fair, this is like the third act of suspicion so far. But my friends, even if this man is cleared on the charges that he's received, that doesn't necessarily void the things that we're speaking about today, and void the fact that there is a lot of sussy-wussy things out there. And I do have to kind of reiterate the fact that there have been a lot of cases in Hollywood where people have been exposed for being horrible people, and yet they did not end up in a jail cell. Some of your favorite people out there have actually signed petitions to protect certain awful people in Hollywood, and these things just never really get spoken about. But um, yeah, what I'm trying to say here is uh, just be prepared for a lot of your favorite uh, celebrities, actors, creators to just not really be who you have the perception of them to actually be. So yes, my friends, of course, innocent until proven guilty. And in fact, in this video, there are going to be a lot of sensitive things that we cover. And I'm going to have to like kind of censor a lot of words given the uh, nature of the topics that we're going to be going into now. And the reason I'm doing that is mainly because, as I said previously, YouTube have been very hostile with their striking system recently, and I want this video to actually get viewed by people, so I'm kind of going to need you to put two and two together with what I'm saying, but I feel like the information that we're now about to go into is, uh, well, it's pretty clear what I'm saying. Pretty much, there is another allegation out there that Justin Roiland helped Alex Hirsch hook up with teen girls, and this allegation goes all the way back to 2020. And this allegation does feature a lot of DMs which do seemingly appear to be Justin Roiland, and of course, these could be fabricated but allow me to, you know, go through them and say what I have to say first before we actually build our opinions. But I also want to say, with Alex, who is mentioned in these DMs, it could really be a case of Royland has only brought this person into it because he wants to use Alex as a fall guy. Now, I don't actually know that, but based on everything that I've gone through and researched, this Alex guy really doesn't come up much, and I really think it wouldn't be fair to necessarily throw this guy under the bus. But alas, it, it is still very sus, but I, I do think this could easily be a case of Justin is seemingly using somebody's name to get what he wants, and in this case, uh, these things are, well, as I said, very, very sus. Now, in these rather weird, uh, peculiar, alleged DMs, Justin is seemingly asking for a weird date, and in fact, he clarifies that a date wouldn't actually be weird unless they were awkward about it, and then he also adds the very lovely line of, uh, <laughs> don't be a homo, and sorry, I I I've apparently broken, well, I I'm, I'm bi, and I think, you know, Look, I don't think he's interested in me. Not, not because I'm bisexual, but mainly because I'm above the age of 18. But yeah, in the DM, he also seemingly then goes on to ask the same person to remove the DMs because, yeah, he obviously realized that, oh, yeah, uh, these things necessarily don't look exactly good on somebody to be asking someone who is not only just a fan, but a young fan. It, it really never looks good to try and hook up with these people. But yeah, this is seemingly a, a, a re reoccurring alleged pattern with this man. And yes, I completely understand that these DMs could absolutely be fabricated and some person who just doesn't like this bloke could come out and make him and spread him all over the internet. You know, I, I could take that into consideration and I, I very much am. But the only problem is, is there are more than one set of leaked DMs with Justin Roiland and uh, once again alleged teen girls. Because yes, DMs were posted of Justin speaking in pretty much the exact same demeanor as he was in the previous DMs I showed you, and again, the phrase of not being a homo shows once again, and also multiple times of calling the person he's speaking to jailbait. And my friends, that uh, jailbait was apparently a 16-year-old girl. 
But also, it gets worse because this same 16-year-old girl actually posted a photo of them at the time, and I'm not going to show the photo in this video, but based on my own perspective, I've looked at the photo when they were 16 years old, and my friends, not only is it absolutely horrific that a man would speak to a 16-year-old in this sort of mannerisms that he's saying in these DMs, obviously, it's absolutely disgusting if these DMs are real, but also, the girl, while 16, yes, it is terrible, she also looks very, very young. And I know 16's young, but she looks like like 12 years old in this photo. Like, not only is it wrong for the obvious reasons, but it gets even more sick and twisted, because obviously he's used the, the phrase jailbait here, and it's like he knows in these DMs, like if these DMs are real, he knows that this is wrong, because the phrase jailbait obviously represents so many horrific things. My friends, if a 30-something-year-old man is calling you jailbait when you are below the ages of 18, run. Just run, because obviously, you've got a big old creepy freak on your case. And yes, my friends, this could obviously be another case of fabricated DMs, and it's just sheer coincidence, but then I move us on to the man's Reddit account, because of course, Justin Roiland has a Reddit account. I'm not really shocked that the co-curator of Rick and Morty has a Reddit account, but he has a Reddit account, and uh, that Reddit account entails some suspicious posts. Basically, there was a thread of a Rick and Morty fan saying that it would be so fun to sit down with a bunch of friends and just come up with some really weird things to make an episode about on Rick and Morty. And you know, Justin, the good old bloke he is, responded with a very normal DM where he said very normal things, such as... Such as this. Come on, Ryan, tell them about the trip to Death Valley together. Underage girls hiking whilst intoxicated, peeing in the guest center room, clogging the bathroom toilet, and flooding the hotel room. Name me two people who went for a wild ride like that who aren't the best of friends. And of course, uh, yes, that's absolutely a, a, a very weird thing to say. And uh, it was back on the time of the internet of where people seemingly didn't realize that the internet is forever and these posts are going to be backlogged forever. And I know what a lot of people will do, and including myself, honestly, if I saw the these things from face value, I would usually presume that, you know, this is an edgy guy who makes a lot of edgy jokes and he's got an edgy past. And yeah, I, I, I can understand, you know, the social climate of the world back in 2015 was very different to what it is now. But, you know, there's a lot of things, my friend. There's a lot of patterns, as I will keep saying throughout this video, which do kind of add up and make things seem not really merely a coincidence, uh, such as this. I found some archive tweets which have now actually been deleted and probably for good reason too, but, you know, somebody did put them on the internet archives, but basically, these tweets were a conversation between some Rick and Morty fans and Justin Roiland, where some fans were concerned that people out there were making a lot of creepy art of Rick and Morty. Of course, in this fictional universe, Rick is a grown adult, an old adult, and Morty is, yes, a minor. And yes, my friends, obviously, it's a little bit different to real life, because yeah, they are fictional characters, but um, the response to these concerns, to me, uh, I don't know, I don't know, just let me know what you think, uh, let me just read it here. Basically, uh, Justin Roiland responds saying that in many realities, Morty and Rick are in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a healthy, romantic relationship. Did he just say healthy? Yes, he did. Oh, please help. And yeah, I know these are fictional characters, but did he really need to say healthy? And then when you go even further, somebody basically says, you just gave nonces something to defend themselves with, and he then replied with saying, Tumblr's gonna tumbler. And that's quite ironic, because half of the allegations out there about Justin Roiland do actually originate from Tumblr. But yeah, this archive Twitter thread, it is just very, very weird, because yeah, it is people just concerned with, you know, the P of in the fandom. And when just outright asked for clarification if Justin Roiland supports these things in the fandom, Justin replied saying he supports comedy and freedom of speech. Do you support nonsense, Ashley? I hope not. And look, I, you know, I'm, I'm a believer in freedom of speech and, and comedy, but, you know, I, I don't really think drawing young characters, I mean minor characters, with old men in art is really freedom of speech. I just think that's pretty, pretty, pretty grim, to be honest with you. I don't think freedom of speech really comes into this, and this is something a lot of people do when, you know, they get called out for, you know, something like this, something horrific. It's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm just, I just support freedom of speech, but it's like, mate, you could just say, yeah, that is weird, isn't it? You, you, could, you could just say that, but no, you had to go on this weird freedom of speech arc where you also said that they're in healthy romantic relationships. And again, they're fictional characters, my friends, but 
Just add in all the context of everything today. Like, you can make jokes, obviously. I, in my recent podcast, I'd made jokes about Harry Potter, but even in those jokes, I clarified that we were creating our own headcanon where everybody in the universe was around the ages of 20 to 60. Nobody could go to Hogwarts if they were below 18, and we made jokes out of it, because I think at that point, yeah, you know, you're, you're establishing rules and laws and stuff, and like, I get it. Jokes are jokes, and people are going to be very messed up, and usually, if this was a one-off thing, I would, you know, look past it and think, edgy guy, edgy humor, but I don't know, boys. I don't know. I just think the context of these tweets change, as I said, based on everything today. But ladies and gentlemen, what makes this story a little bit more strange is I thought this whole thing only originated this week. I thought that the public had only heard about these things in the last few days, but it turns out that isn't the case, and that's where I actually need to bring in, um, well, NFTs. Don't worry, I'm not going to try and sell you an NFT of Logan Paul mashed up with a blobfish. I'm, I'm not doing that today. But yeah, uh, basically, the NFT community, as uh, controversial, as, uh, controversial as they are, have been at war with Justin Roiland, actually, in the past. Because by doing an advanced Twitter search of Justin and a few keywords before the events of this week, I managed to find that in November of 2022, a lot of people in the NFT community were actually at war with Justin. They were basically calling this man out for everything that we are pretty much speaking about in this video today. There were a whole plethora of posts out there saying that this guy is pretty much a horrible person and an outright criminal, and this was mainly because of a lot of, once again, more resurfaced posts from Justin Roiland. In this case, it actually came from the man's website, where a lot of pictures and videos came out, which are just very, very disturbed. I have seen a lot of content that the man's put on there, and of course, it's all art of fictional characters, but it doesn't really make it any less disturbing, especially when you kind of add in the context of everything we've spoken about today. And this was mainly because of a lot of, once again, more resurfaced posts from Justin Roiland. In this case, it actually came from the man's website, where a lot of pictures and videos came out, which are just... Very, very disturbed. I have seen a lot of content that the man's put on there, and of course, it's all art of fictional characters, but it doesn't really make it any less disturbing, especially when you kind of add in the context of everything we've spoken about today. There was a post here of somebody who I guess is meant to be a kid saying that after all these years, I, I thought it was my real mom and dad molest... <sighs> And then there was another post of one character, which is clearly Rick and Morty doing really, really... Ma and I'm not going to show you the details, but they're doing some messed up stuff. And it gets even more messed up when there is a clear image that he's created, or it's just on his website, of Rick and Morty doing things, which... Yeah, um, and obviously, again, people are going to make the argument, oh, it's a fictional character. I don't really understand how many arguments you need to make to defend a guy from these things. Like, it's not a typical argument you would make defending your friend. Like, usually, you know, your friend gets a little bit drunk, he says some silly things, but this isn't that. You're, you're defending, like, somebody who's actually making, like, cartoon... Nonsery. These allegations don't just go back to 2022, 2020, they even stretch back to 2018, where some people were again calling out Justin Roiland for certain videos and pieces of media on his old website. And there was one video in particular which I'm, I'm not going to play, but I will say some of the things that happen in this video. Pretty much, uh, there was a character having certain fantasies about younger people and and there are things which happen, yeah, uh, you don't really, you kind of get where I'm going with this. The character is having fantasies, and the fantasies are drawn, and it ends up, which with a bit I will show you, with the character saying probably the most ironic thing I think I've heard in recent memory. Oh my god, I can't keep this up forever. My mind is so distracted. Oh, the police, the police are going to catch up with me eventually. They'll lock me up. My friends... <laughs> I don't really think this aged particularly well. I mean, I, I don't think you could say it aged particularly well when it came out, but, you know, it's not aged too well. Like, based on everything that's happened in the last few weeks, yeah, it, it's not looking good. And regardless of that ending, it's just insanely grim. And as I keep saying, kind of builds a picture to, you know everything that we've been speaking about. But my friends, it's it's not just Justin Roiland, it's also his other co-curator, Dan Harmon, as there were posts out there of Dan uh, doing like a short film well, of where he would get a plastic ba baby and... <laughs> You can kind of get what, you know, do you remember like a lot of old Shane Dawson videos which got exposed? It's like that, but honestly, even worse. It's just, 
beyond levels of messed up. And this actually in the past has led to a lot of posts of people calling that guy everything that Justin Roiland is now being called. And you have to look at the fact that these guys have literally made a show together and bad people always mix themselves in with bad people. I know that sounds a bit obvious to say, but I I'm really not shocked that somebody like Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland created an entire show together. And you also have to add in the fact that Dan was also accused of pretty much uh, harassing writing staff. And people have said that the writing staff in this situation has now forgiven Dan, but I'm pretty sure that doesn't really kind of wipe out the history. It still happened. It shows this guy's character and nature. He's clearly a very, very odd bloke. But fellas, with everything we've gone through today, you're probably thinking, wow, this guy, you know, he, he's pretty terrible. And I'd be, you know, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you. Now, some of you may be big old Rick and Morty uh, diehard fans. You know, you've got Pickle Rick pictures all over your walls and you just can't handle it. And with that, you, you know, your bias comes in. It stops you from thinking certain things which you just don't want to believe that the creator of Pickle Rick, your god, may not be a good bloke. And with that, I have left the worst until last. Two specific clips that I'm going to play you right now. And I do want to give you the context that in most of these clips, well, all of these clips, Justin Roiland is above the age of 30. Without further ado, take a listen. Do Justin's advice for me to get a girl kind of worked out, but you should put a warning advice. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. You should put a warning. Only lasts 48 hours. Oh. Because the girl I said had a nice do you remember when you gave oh, yeah, advice? Oh, yeah, tell her yeah. she's got a nice... <laughs> be, be a man, this be tough. This is the one that everybody thinks was gay, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. at a school? I guess be so. this... confident, mm -hmm. act, like you, act like you know you're fucking awesome, and, yeah. these, and if you're, like, in fourth grade, these girls, they're going to be blindsided. Fourth grade. If I could go back and be a fourth grade kid right now with what I know, oh, my God, I'd be, like, walking around. I'd be getting laid every fucking day. You're gross. And it fourth would be, grade. And it would be legal, too, because I would be a little kid. And he's been practicing on a fourth grader now, so he knows how to yeah. do it. Uh-huh. No, she's 22. Um, she oh does have God. braces, though. <laughs> I love it. I love the braces. It's hot. Okay. Uh, it says, anyways, she said, she said, she had a nice... I'm not a pedophile, though, all right? Mm. Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, didn't really want... I'm not attracted to fucking little kid bodies. I like women bodies. Look, I'll say, look, a 14-year-old that looks like she's 18 and, like, big titties mm -hmm. and a nice... Yeah. Like, of course mm, I'm, a, yeah. I'm attracted to that. Ooh, yeah. That's why this whole Chris Hansen thing, I'm like... You man, they, mm -hmm. these girls are like they look. They're fully developed, and they're like they talking online. I want you to. I mean, me the, the, the girls that old men or women pretend to be to lure the files into the house. Yeah, but they would email photos uh -huh. of what they look like, uh -huh. and the ones I saw were like that girl's fully uh -huh. developed uh -huh. woman. Yeah, uh -huh. like come on, back in like <laughs> how are we that like we're, as a race are we that crazy? Like when we were fucking a hundred years ago, uh -huh. it was. Little 13-year-old girls, if they were built like a woman, they were getting married and having kids. Uh -huh. And now we're going to be all precious about it. I keep using the word precious today. That's the word of the week. Which is a movie about a child. Precious. <laughs> right? Or Down Syndrome Baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyways, uh -huh. uh, I'm not a pedophile, though. I do I'm follow a uh -huh. I wait till they're 18 <laughs> if, 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 if I'm ever so lucky as to have the opportunity. Now, my friends, I uh, like to pride myself on my uh, ability to judge somebody's character. And I'm just starting to think that, you know, maybe this isn't all a coincidence. Maybe... Maybe there's something weird going on here. Now, as I said, there is more than one clip. There isn't that two. And it does just keep on getting worse. So, uh, listen to this as well. Hey, GBP. <laughs> I'm so glad there was finally an episode last week. But I know you guys are busy. And Ryan, I'm sorry about your breakup. But if you're willing to wait two years, I'll be your new girlfriend. Love you guys. Oh, she's Ooh. six. Sweet is 16. She... How old is she? Holy How old is she? Supposed to be 16. Well, unless uh, she's walking to I, LA no, by I, foot, and it's going to take two years. Can I? Can I just say that you know, send some pictures, because you could be like fat and gross. Stop. She's it. got two years to shape up for me, Justin. Okay, well, fine, but send some. F There's nothing illegal about Listen, a sixteen-year-old sending perfectly normal uh, clothed no, uh, images no, to Ryan. Yeah, no. There's definitely something legal about me receiving illegal? them. Illegal. Now that now that the context is illegal. That I'm <laughs> I question that. I'm not interested if you are... I'm not interested in your, if you're 18, frankly. You know what? I... I However, I, that's me saying that now, in two years, I could be a real creep ball. No, listen. Here's the thing, girl. Send Ryan no, some personal do not images. Be, no, Stop it. Just make sure that they're legal. First Don't of all, be you, nude you're, you're not fine. interested. You're not going to be interested in me. No, she'll love you, and she'll cook for you, and clean, and ha and bear your goddamned <laughs> children, you son of a- I have to reiterate again, my friends. This man is 31 years of age in this clip. 
I'm not even 31 right. I'm not even close to 31. I'm not. Don't say I am. I'm not. And, mate, mate, come on. With everything that we have gone through today, I'm I'm really, really struggling to see any form of defense for this. Like, his attorneys can say what they want about clearing this man's name. How how can you clear everything? I, I, I It's going to be a big cleaning job. <laughs> you can say that twice because, my lord, there is just so much stuff in this horrific pile of ch my friends, this is genuinely one of the most disturbing deep dives I've ever made on my channel, and I cover things like this quite a lot, but it's a bit more disturbing when you realize how much this guy has been celebrated over the years. Now, I'm not necessarily blaming people that love this guy, obviously. You don't really know these things, like, very obviously without doing your research, and then you do your research and it just gets... Oh, it, it, I feel like I need to get therapy after this. I feel like I genuinely need some form of therapy. But alas, yes, it's not your fault if you didn't know about these things. Obviously, I'm not blaming you for that. But also, there are people in the fandom that have been being very weird about these whole things. Just, I guess, breaking down that the fact that they're no longer going to get Rick and Morty content. And it's like, boys, just go watch other cartoons. Like, I, I know, you know, it might be a bit shit that, yeah, your favorite cartoon's no longer going to be made. Although, knowing certain companies' histories, they probably will give another season. But unless, you know, if, if it's never made again, lads, there are other cartoons out there. Just realize that there are potential victims in this situation. And I think the fact that Rick and Morty could possibly end should probably be a worry, which we kind of think about, you know, like a year down the line. <laughs> like, we, we don't really need to cover that, lads. So all I'm going to say is, please, for the love of God, just stop being weird. Now, fellas, to kind of come to some form of conclusion to this video, I really don't know what we can say. I know the phrase, there's no smoke without fire, is used in a lot of these sort of situations, but honestly, I don't really think there's a regular fire here. And if there is, it's more of a forest fire. Like, the Amazon forest is burning down. Like, the clips I played you just now, I really don't think I actually needed to go through anything. Those clips alone are just absolutely incriminating. But what I've been saying throughout this video is, yes, there are ways you can defend certain things. You can say, oh, there's context to this. Oh, this is a joke. Oh, there's this. But then when you start to add everything together, you add the DMs in with everything, you add in the, the old podcast clips, everything, you add in all of the current charges and everything going on in the world right now, and all of the actions and interactions he's had with people over the course of time in the Hollywood industry, it, it really only, in my opinion, paints a picture of somebody who is absolutely terrible. I don't really think there's anything more I can say other than Justin Roiland is an awful person. Regardless of if this guy is found guilty or not, I really don't think that I personally need a guilty charge to say that, hey, this guy is just not somebody that I want to support in the future. Because as I said earlier in this video, yes, he probably will actually get off. I would not be surprised. The guy's a multi-millionaire. We've seen so many powerful people People get away with so much stuff and I really wouldn't be shocked if this was another case of that but to end this video I will say this situation is so much worse than I originally thought it was and I'm genuinely shocked that half this stuff isn't being reported in the actual media I think it might after something like this and I think right now all I can say to end this video is could you please share this I feel like there's some very important information that needs to get out there and you don't even necessarily need to subscribe I mean if you want to that be great but honestly just get the news out there about everything i've shown you today because i think it's deeply concerning that this really has all been hidden away from us for years and years but that is the ending of the video thank you so much for coming along i understand this video was very depressing and very mundane and i will try and make my video uh, next one a, a lot more entertaining and fun and, and jokey it's kind of hard to do that in a video where we are dealing with something as sensitive as the things we're dealing with today but yeah i would really appreciate it if you let me know your thoughts down below please engage with this video it's so important to get this video out there like comment your opinions comment anything comment beans please subscribe and also uh, if you want to subscribe to my other uh, content out there i do have buddy's podcast which will be the up next video i would really appreciate it if you checked it out and uh yeah see you in the next video i'm sorry that this was so depressing and peace out and i'm sorry if i've ruined rick and morty for you Bye bye
programa. 